Everybody's different. Mm. <laughs> Hello, Frenzy. My name is Kate Shark, and welcome back to my channel. Um, happy Pride Month once again. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, uh, I am highlighting Pride Month by highlighting a small queer-owned business uh, to uh, promote for each episode this month. So, that being said, today's episode, uh, I'm highlighting Give a Fluff. Give a Fluff is a company. Uh, it's run by a non-binary person. I don't know their name and I do apologize. However, uh, they have all kinds of designs if you're an animal lover, uh, especially if you like corgis, it's definitely a place to check out. <clears throat> uh, they have all kinds of designs uh, and they even have a pride collection with 10% of the proceeds of their pride collection going to Trans Lifeline, which is a wonderful cause. Um, and they also have just straight up pride stuff. Uh, they also have other stuff if maybe that's just not your bag. Um, they have things like uh, Star Wars themed stuff, other pop culture references, Halloween. And I know they're working on new stuff at the moment, so hopefully very soon they will come up with, they'll have a whole new uh, set of designs out for the for anyone so definitely check them out I'll put their website in the description box below um, and I think believe give a fluff is all their tags on social media as well so do check them out there I have quite a I've had bought shirts and stuff from them in the past I have a few stickers of theirs it's just really a cute company I think you should support them anyway that being said let's go ahead and pull up where we are okay <clears throat> I groaned I reasoned to myself that I could stay in bed another five minutes if I ate while walking to the station <laughs> five more minutes I'll make up the time by running to the, up the escalators one more minute <laughs> you're never gonna get up sweetheart oh no I was going to be late I was able to get out of bed and in the end, my morning commute was a terrible rush. I made it to work just barely on time, which was late considering that I usually arrived early. Eh. There was already a stack of faxes and documents waiting on my desk for me to process. Today was going to be a long day. Oh god, him. Hey Michelle. Hello, you there? No, <laughs> I'm busy. I'm fucking busy. Uh, oh, still there? What is it, Joey? You look like you were in a trance. Are you all right? I'm just a little tired. It's quite a lot of work for me to do this morning. Oh yeah? You shouldn't push yourself so hard. Are you going to get lunch soon? I see you often go to that nearby eatery. Is it good? Not yet. I have a few doc more documents I want to push through. You work too much. You need to take a break or you're going to exhaust yourself. I know, I know. You look so pale. Did you eat this morning? Get off my dick. What do you want? No, I was running a bit late, so I skipped breakfast. What? What? How can you not eat at all? Calm down, she skipped breakfast. It happens sometimes. Uh, yeah, for real. Okay, we're getting lunch. No. Now? Yes, or else she'll pass out. I skipped breakfast. I'm not running a fucking marathon with nothing in my stomach. Chill out, dude. <laughs> I brought lunch today. What? If you're tired, you need to eat something fresh and hot. Oh my god. You sound like my mother. Really good, because I care. Ugh. <laughs> Stop. Come on, let's get some grub. I brought Joy to my usual to my usual lunch time haunt. I like this place as it was conveniently close to the office and reasonably priced. What will you order? I usually get the barbecue pork rice. I'll get that. Excuse me, miss. We'll get two orders of barbecue pork rice. Don't order for me. Wait. Actually, make that just one. I'll get the fishball soup instead. Okay, one order of barbecue pork rice and one order of fishball soup. Thank you. Soup. So light. It's sufficient. It's If it suits you... Though if you're tired, you should eat something meatier. If you're trying to build up to an innuendo, I'll sock you right in the face. <laughs> My sister has anemia and she gets dizzy spells very easily when she doesn't eat enough. You know what? <clears throat> <laughs> she, 
that's your sister Lucille too. <laughs> you have to eat more pork and beef if you're anemic. Who said I was anemic? Is that so? That's too bad for your sister. Yes, my mother makes for her goji berry and red date soup. Good for women, she says. I could ever make some extra for you. I'm not anemic. Get off my dick. Oh, there's no need for that. I just didn't get enough sleep last night. I'll be sure to eat a balanced diet. If that'll get you off my case. Jesus Christ. All right, good. Hey, tell me. It's a little personal, but do you mind if I ask you something? Yes, because you're already up in my business. What is it? A fellow in my department wanted to know if there was someone you liked. What is this? Middle school? Well. Ugh, I don't want to play into this. I don't know. I'll pass the boy. <clears throat> I'll pass the person a note in gym. Calm down. Um, let's see. No, I don't like anyone right now. There might be someone. Why do you ask? Yeah, why do you ask? I was just ask <clears throat> asking for a coworker. Would that person happen to be appear every time you look in the mirror? Okay, okay. I know it was too personal. You know, your reports are quite popular among my colleagues. What are you talking about? Huh? It's just data. I don't understand why it's so popular. No, you... You're always with Mrs. Tam. Oh, no, you. You're popular, is what you're saying. Well, I'm Mrs. Tam's personal assistant. That's why you're quite an enigma for the rest of the office. <clears throat> an enigma. I don't think I'm a mysterious person. All right, then answer me another question. No! It's a simple one. What? <laughs> what are your hobbies? What do you like to do outside of work? I like to be left alone. That's... <laughs> I like to read and listen to music. Things I can do by myself. <laughs> You know, ordinary things. That's great. What kind of book? What kind of books do you like? Nothing in particular. I can read any book. What are you reading now? Uh, I'm reading the oh god, Wuxia novel. This Wuxia novel. What's that? Hold on, let me look that up. A Wuxia book or novel, uh, which literally means martial heroes, is a genre of. Chinese fiction concerning the adventures of martial artists in ancient China. Well, that sounds really fucking cool, actually. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. I read them lots when I was... A, I read them lots when I was in my teens. Hey, do you think you got the brows of a kung fu superstar? What? What? <laughs> my mother says I'm handsome enough to be an actor. <laughs> okay. She said studying was more important. But she said something that's more important. My mommy says I'm handsome. So that's why I have glasses and became an accountant. So they're just windows. I see, that's quite logical advice. Do you think she was right? She has a point. It's tough to make it as a film star. <laughs> hmm, I guess so. My mother was right in the end. I don't think I could work anywhere as an actor outside of Hong Kong. What do you mean by that? You don't think about immigrating? I haven't yet. You should start thinking about it. They signed the papers. You think things will be the same? I don't know. I can't imagine things will change that much. I don't know what they're talking about signing the papers. Are you thinking about leaving Hong Kong for good? I plan on it. I went to college in America. Oh, okay. It's not bad. Eh. The roads and houses are huge. Everything, including the food proportions, are bigger. My dream is to own a big house with a big yard and raise a family. Well, if that's the time to do it, it's in the 80s. <laughs> um, I see. It's quite an admirable dream. So why don't you stay in America? Why didn't you stay in America after finishing your studies? Oh, my mother wanted me to come back and find a wife in Hong Kong first. Oh, Jesus. Now you're just scouting for wives. I see. You majored in English, right? It won't be too big of a change for you to live in America. I'm not sure about that. The food came out shortly. Are you trying to get me to marry you and move to America? We've barely spoken. <laughs> Joey seems to be an intel seemed to be an intelligent guy. He was tall. His appearance was neat. He wore an expensive brand of wi wrist watch. Blah. It looked new. The silver on the band still had a bright shine. He probably came from a good and caring family. I'm sure he is beloved and cherished. The beloved and cherished son bleh, of the family. I cannot speak today. 
His mother and father must be proud of him. I watched him dig into his meal. There was something about the way he ate barbecue pork rice and the way the sheen of pork fat shone off his lips. It wasn't at all similar to Sam's. What? I got up from my seat quickly. I just remembered I haven't set off my morning reports to my supervisor yet. I always had them done before lunch. How tired must I be to let that slip my mind? You're done eating already? Yes, I want to head back to the office to finish my work. You're so gung-ho to work. That's great. Wait for me, I'll finish up too. Can you just leave me alone? <laughs> After an intense, intensive day at my desk, I managed to finish my work on time. I packed up my things and clocked out. That day I decided to go straight home. I might put on a movie after dinner to relax. Regardless, it would be an early night at home for me. I was happy it was finally the weekend. It had been a long and tiring week. I wanted to take it easy for the next few days. All because of a broken shoe. Such a sequence of events that had transpired. Wow, I can't. By fluke, the shoe broke and became unwearable. But now that it's fixed, the shoe will carry out its purpose until it eventually wears out and becomes unwearable again. Until then, the shoe has no need to be repaired by a shoe cobbler. In the same way, a healthy person doesn't need to be seen by a doctor. And likewise, I didn't have any reason to see her. Of course, I watched the movie that I bought from her. Not because it was her suggestion, but because I had already bought a copy. It'd be a waste to set it aside and let it collect dust in my room. I had looked into the film. It received a few accolades at the time of its release. I wanted to see it for its own cultural merit. I watched the movie. The main character, she struggled every moment in the film to be accepted as an equal in society. Ugh. She struggled until everything was taken away from her. Everything she did almost felt like it was done in vain. It was a very depressing movie. <laughs> Sam, what did you think after watching this film? I stopped the tape and rewound it to the beginning. Saturday was the day that I have time to tidy up my room and prepare for the next week. I had done my laundry in the morning and finished sorting everything into its proper place. There was one item that did not have its proper place, however. I still had Sam's shirt that I borrowed that day. I pondered what I should do with it. I thought against hanging it up in my closet. Having it would be an eyesore reminder of the strange night I spent with her. Tossing it out would be too heartless. She still had my blouse. I wouldn't want her to toss out my blouse. It was Italian silk. I don't know about Sam's cotton shirt, but mine had monetary value. Okay, prissy. <laughs> I hope she didn't throw away a perfectly good shirt. Hmm. I should get back my blouse and give this shirt back to her. That would make us even. And we won't have anything more between us after that. <clears throat> Mother, I'm going out today. You're going out? Who are you meeting? I'm meeting a friend. A friend? Yes, a high school classmate. Where are you meeting? I'm 23 years old! Just at the markets in Mongkok. Uh, we'll look around there and have lunch nearby. The skirt you're wearing is so short. And white, col and white color? Anyone can easily see your white underwear. Jesus, Mary and Joseph, Mom. Mother. <laughs> no. You should change into pants if you're going out alone. It's fine, Mother. <laughs> it's dangerous, especially in such a busy place. Everyone dresses like this on a hot day. Really? I'm not going far, and I'm not planning to be out long anyway. When will you come home? When I'm home! I don't know. I'll be home by dinner time. Okay. Make sure to come home earlier. I'll make your favorite dish, excuse me, fish maw soup. All right, I can't wait to have it. I'll be back home soon. Bye-bye. Get off my dick, mother. I lied to my mother again. It wasn't anything. The truth would confuse and trouble her. My mother raised me quite strictly. It wasn't until after I had finished high school that she eased up about me going out to meet with friends. Jesus Christ. In the past, she had to vet and approve who I was seeing before she let me leave through the door. So for me to explain to her someone like Sam, it was obvious I had to alter the truth. She would be concerned if she knew I had met her just by chance in Hmong Kok. And she would be bewildered if she knew I had gone with her to a pub. 
I would not even know where to begin with my mother if I had to explain the nature of our relationship. Little things such as celebrity gossip and drama were a const consternation to my conservative mother. How could she even process the concept of two girls being in such a relationship? It wasn't related to me, of course. But for my mother, the concept of it doesn't even exist in her mind. Such a thing would not fall the category of perverse and abnormal behavior for her and anyone else in proper society. If I told my mother what kind of person Sam was, she would go into temporary shock and then barrage me with a hundred questions after she revived. No matter what, I told my mother what I told my mother was a small lie. I was going to the market. It was a weekend after all. The weather was beautiful and clear. It was a warm but not overly sweltering. There was a light breeze in the air. For such a beautiful summer day, I should go out and enjoy what the city has to offer. <coughs> Excuse me. My plan was to go to Sam's store, drop off her old shirt, and hopefully reclaim the blouse that I left with her. And then I would be off on my own merry way. I would have squared up whatever I have left to do with Sam. I could do anything I want after that. Maybe I would go shopping. The most important thing was getting my blouse back. That was my plan. I've forgotten how busy the market gets on the weekend. With the weekend crowds that took a considerable effort to locate Sam's little video stall. I remember I had gotten myself lost in the area the other night. I made one wrong turn and I gave myself quite a fright. I couldn't believe it. it. Looked like any other market street during the day. There were so many people out and about. All the stores were open. It was hardly eerie. Now what street was, on, was Sam's store on again? When I arrived at her store I found that the gate panels were shuttered. The store was closed. Did she step out for a break? I looked closely and saw a note stuck to the shop panel. It said the store won't be open today. Half expected that this would happen. I wasn't too surprised. Sam seemed like a person who would let her business go on, let go of her business on the busiest day of the week. But really, today of all days, I couldn't believe it. She was always leaving her store in the middle of the day like this? Or was she? What should I do? I came all this way. <coughs> I didn't want to come here again if I could avoid it. Should I go to her apartment? But how would I know that she would be home? Could I locate her apartment if I tried? It wasn't too far from here, but all the buildings and streets looked similar, and the neighborhood looked completely different at night compared to the day. Oh, excuse me. No, I barely knew her. I shouldn't go knocking on her door unannounced. But... I stood on the sidewalk contemplating. I got strange looks from people in this area. I felt uncomfortable. Sam's store was not exactly in the best area in town. I should go. There was no point in waiting around here. I would have to write off my blouse as a loss. I started my way back towards the train station when I felt the hand of someone slap my back quite hard. Jesus! I turned around. I was upset. I had no patience to be accosted today. Yeah, I had a feeling. <clears throat> what is it? Huh? Hey, it's Michelle, right? <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. I have fish burps. <clears throat> it was that bar owner, Cecilia. She had a pair of oversized sunglasses on her face and dressed in bright, flamboyant colors. If she did not have a signature way of styling herself, I wouldn't have recognized her so easily on sight. Uh, Cecilia. The other night, you and Samantha left so early, I didn't get a chance to see you on the dance floor. Sorry about that. So, did something happen between you two that night? Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> you don't know? Samantha was acting odd yesterday. I guess nothing happened after all. Well, whatever. You're meeting Samantha here, right? No, I was just in the area. Oh, why do you have to- Oh, why do you always have to be so coy? Dressed up like that? Like what? A white skirt? Who are you fooling? Well, it's too bad you met me instead. I'm also looking for Samantha. I need more and more person to play bird with me later? Well, don't ask me. I don't have any idea where she is. Do you play Mahjong? No, I don't. What? You're joking. I'm not. You should try. We have Mahjong nights at my house every Tuesday. I'm busy. Talking to you is like talking to a brick wall sometimes. 
I'm only answering frankly. I don't get you. All right. If you don't know where Samantha is either, I'm going to call her. I'm not going to waste my time waiting around. Cecilia walked over to a phone booth and dialed a number from memory. A phone booth. Shit. She didn't seem to wait long before hanging up. Hmm. She's still not picking up. Good thing I got her page a pager. She's always so difficult to get a hold of. She's not picking up. She's probably out. A pager. I'll leave her a message. She dialed another number and left a brief message with the operator. She walked back to me and proceeded to take out a large ring of keys from her jacket pocket. Cecilia sorted through the set of keys until she found a small silver one that she unlocked, used to unlock Sam's store gates. She pulled the gates halfway up and gestured for me to go inside. Okay, she should get a message soon. Just wait a bit longer for her. She's usually good about answering messages. I was actually about to leave. After I went out of my way to help you? I've already waited long enough. I'm going now. I didn't make plans to meet her anyway. Why do you act like this? I really don't understand. What? If you're going to do something, then do it. Don't back out halfway. Yeah. Are you going to wait or not? Inside the store? Well, are you going to squat on the street? No, of course not. Then step inside. I followed Cecilia into Sam's store. It seemed like Cecilia won't let me go unless I conceded to her. I'm surprised that you have the key to the store. Wasn't this Sam's store? I had ownership of this place before the lease got transferred to her. I kept the spare key. You ever know when it might come in handy. Ugh. Aren't you glad that I ran into you? I didn't actually need to meet her. I just have something to give back to her. Ah, I already told her, told her to meet you here. Sit, sit. Go put on a movie for yourself. You know, this reminds me. A long time ago, Sam showed up to my bar one day and asked for a job. What a character. She wouldn't get on my face until she got something out of me. That's how we first met, by the way. Did you give her the job? No way. She wasn't even old enough to work at a bar then. Really? Yeah. Typical troubled youth. Don't worry, I straightened her out with a proper job at a record store. It was a side business of mine at the time. Every day she would show up to work with an attitude, and she would have to give me a sass by talking back to me. What a stubborn kid. She never listened to my advice. I can't believe it's been ten years already. This place used to be that record store. The laser disc on the shelf used to be vinyls. <laughs> That wall over there used to play the cassette tape, display the cassette tapes. Time really goes by quickly. Well, you can see she turned this place to a video store now. She finds a way to make things work out somehow. That's her. I see. You seem to know Sam well. Of course. We go way back. Known her long enough, we might as well be real sisters. <laughs> ah, enough about thinking about the past. I have to get going. Here, take the spare key. She's going... She's somehow in OSHA today. Just lock the store back up and throw the key into the mailbox. You're going to leave me here? If you don't mind. I've dimmed some brunch plans. I have to get going now. What? Wait a minute. I'm not going to wait all day for someone I don't even know that well. I only came here to get back something I left with her. You know, sometimes you think you have it figured out. And that you have it all the time in the world to act. But sometimes things don't always go the way you want. What you desire the most can slip out of your hands suddenly and without warning. What are you saying? I honestly don't like someone who's wishy-washy about things. They complain when things go wrong, but they have no right to complain if they've been sitting on their hands the entire time. I don't understand why Samantha is in... Why am I rambling to you? Let me ask this clearly. Are you pursuing Samantha? Uh, are you? I just have some business with her. Hmm. To be successful, you have to take the initiative. Don't be afraid to take matters into your own hands. I know that. Pride is important. But there are other things to consider as well. I'm sure you'll understand this someday. Ciao. Oh. Cecilia walked away in a huff. She seemed agitated about something. I saw her get in a cab and she disappeared out of my sight as quickly as she came. I was left alone in Sam's video store. I got the gist of what Cecilia was trying to say to me. 
Was she actually trying to help me or was she just antagonizing me? I didn't understand why she had to bring it up. I looked outside. No sign of Sam. I walked back into the store and took a seat on the folding chair that Sam had left out. <clears throat> I didn't understand why someone like Cecilia would trust me with a key to Sam's store. I glanced around the empty shop. I suppose there wasn't much <coughs> excuse me, for anyone to steal. I checked my watch. I'll give it half an hour. I didn't want to wait any longer than I have already. If I didn't meet Sam today, I suppose I could leave the shirt I borrowed from her in the store. I washed it and had the consideration to bring it back to her. At least I won't owe her anything anymore. As time went by, a few people had knocked on the half-open gate and inquired if the store was open. I had to inform them to come back another day. There was a good number of missed opportunities for sales. Such inconsistency could... Such inconsistency must not be good for business, I thought to myself. I waited. I had read through every movie title she had in her store, though none of them really caught my interest. I turned on her television. Sam had left a movie in the VHS player. I watched part of it. It was almost near the end. It was a black and white Japanese film about a young woman who was pressured by everyone in her family to marry. After much resistance, she eventually decides on marrying an older, widowed man. That's how the film ends. I glanced at my watch again. It was about time I got going. I put down the bag containing Sam's shirt on the counter. I turned off the television and the lights, and I stepped out of the store. Pulled the gates all the way back down, with the click of the lock and the plunk of the key thrown into the mailbox, so, so ends my short run as a shopkeeper. Perhaps I'll re return to this post again someday. Just kidding. As I was about to leave, I heard a voice call out to me. Michelle! <laughs> I looked behind me. It was her. It was unmistakably Sam. I recognized her quickly. She was waving her arms at me from across the street. She wore a jean jacket with matching jean shorts. Her jacket, <coughs> jacket looked bulky and heavy, while her shorts looked thin and ragged. Judging by the length of her shorts, I knew clearly that Sam was not a person who was shy to show leg. She, has she no shame? I couldn't get why she was like this. Sam could be feminine one day, boyish another, and something in between the next. I could never have been pinned down her style. Something about it made me feel irritated that she could be so free like this. Sam was smiling. She shouted my name again, pronouncing it loudly again to the open streets. I had already acknowledged her with a slight head nod. There was no need for me to yell back to her. I waited for Sam to be next to me before I replied her. She jogged lightly towards me. She skipped across the traffic, nearly causing an accident. Sam ought to be more careful. There's some sweat on her brow. She looked out of breath as if she was in a hurry today. I saw that Sam was holding a bike helmet and a large bouquet of flowers. Her shorts are no shorter than your skirt. It's really Michelle. That cat came back. Sam, were you looking for me? Don't pout, okay? I'm here. I'm not pouting. You really gave me trouble looking for me. You. Well, you found me. I came to get back your shirt. I left it on your store counter. Thank you. I forgot all about it. How'd you get in the store, though? I ran to your friend Cecilia on the way here. She had let me into your shop. It's locked back up now. I put the spare key in the mailbox. I heard a, I heard a li little from her message. That's strange. I didn't know she had a spare key. Well, that's something you have to sort out with her. Can I get back the shirt I left with you at the cleaners? You picked it up, right? Of course I did. You, can you get it for me? I'm sorry I have to be somewhere soon. Can I grab it for you later? I have to get going. It's an important day for me. I promise I'll give it back after. Okay. Sam had her own plans too, huh? I was not surprised. It was a beautiful sunny Saturday. I should have expected that she had her own plans and people to meet. It's not like we were friends. We were basic, barely acquaintances. But I couldn't help feeling a little bit inquisitive. What's with the big bouquet of flowers in your hands? This is for a special lady. Oh, I would have gotten you a bouquet too had I known I was going to see you today. Huh? No, I don't care for flowers. You know, nature. Would you like to meet her, Michelle? What? No. I'm going now. After coming all the way to meet me. Since you're here, I want to introduce you to her. Come with me. Oh, Sam, I have plans already. Eh, that's too bad. I'm heading to Saikun. Yeah, it's a lovely day to be by the ocean. If you can, I'd be happy for you if you came with. I don't really... It'll be fun. 
Let me grab a spiller helmet. A helmet. I'm taking a scooter. A scooter, like a motorbike. Yeah, of course. That's dangerous. Why do you need something like that? You can take a bus everywhere in the city. Well, sometimes I need something to help me move stuff around. It has a hefty compartment box for storage. It has a pretty good fuel economy. I would say it's more, no more dangerous than the minibus. They say keep to the speed limits, but you know how fast they can be. You always have a point. I always feel like I want to fly out the door when I'm on a minibus. See? So you'll be coming along then? I don't know. I have some plans in the evening. I see. Will it take long? No, just the afternoon. I'll come. But only if you promise that you'll give me back my blouse. <laughs> no. Of course. And that you'll bring me back home by nightfall. No worries about that. Okay. All right then, let's go. Somehow I had let myself get caught up in her pace again. Part of me was a tiny bit curious to know where Sam was going. It had been a long time since I went out on a leisure trip with someone. Sai Kong is close by. It's not much further than my commute to Hong Kong Island for work. I decided to go and come back. And that'll be between us. Sam brought out her scooter from around the corner and had me right on the back seat. She went to her store, grabbed a helmet for me. I put the helmet on and gingerly put my arms around Sam's waist. Oh! <laughs> she started up the bike with a jolt. Oh shit. Her small bike navigated the city streets with ease. <clears throat> we turned down the highway and within minutes we put into the high-rise buildings behind us. I held tightly onto Sam. It wasn't for me to feel close to her. But I hel held on to her as tight as possible for safety's sake. It was my first time on a bike like this. If I knew I would be on a bike today, I would have never worn a skirt. It was so breezy. I did not like it. Sam seemed comfortable sitting in the front. She could put her feet flat down on the scooter and sit up straight. The footrest on the passenger seat for the bike was too far back for my feet. I had to lean forward and straddle the seat with my thighs to keep myself from sliding off. Um, I didn't like that my bare legs touched Sam's. <laughs> I felt consciously sticky. It was a humid summer day, and despite what Sam said about the minibus, no matter how fast they went, at least a bus had a protective metal cage forming a barrier between the human body and that of a speeding roadway. You're holding me so tightly. <laughs> you don't have to be so scared. You're going too fast. I thought you said this thing was slow. I never said that. True, she didn't. It's shaking so much. Are you sure you're going at the speed limit? I am. I'll slow down a bit from the corner ahead. Just lean in towards me. What? You almost flipped the bike. You're exaggerating. What is this old thing? It's not old. It's actually brand new. Can't you drive something safer? It's safe. Let me off at the next bus stop. I'll get there myself. Come on, Michelle. Just focus on the view. Look on your right. You can see the ocean now. I can't see anything with your hair on my face. Oh. Let's make a pit stop now. Quickly. Uh-oh. Oh, it's oh, a nice bike. Sam pulled over onto the road shoulder to make an abrupt stop. I took off the helmet and I looked cautiously out. Cute. The sight of the ocean glowing with sunlight was certainly dazzling. It was a gorgeous day. The wind against us was pleasant. I could hear the sounds of boats in the distance. Sam stepped off her bike and gestured for me to take her hand. I was about to get off the bike to get a better view of the ocean when a minibus went past us and nearly knocked the both of us off. Jesus! Such feelings of amazement quickly dissipated into the wind. Let's keep going. It's a little dangerous to stop here. Sam started up the bike again. She continued riding along the road above the ocean. It was cooler here than in the city. As we continued down the road, there was less and less traffic. I felt more comfortable without the curious glances from other drivers. However, I couldn't feel completely at ease. Sam's bike leaned dangerously too close to the road for my comfort. I resumed the brace position and buried myself into Sam's back again. It's better to maintain a low center of gravity for safety's sake, I thought. I swore I heard Sam laugh, though it could have been my imagination. The sound of the motor was loud. Sam's long hair was blowing into my face with the wind against us. It was hard to see anything without her wavy hair covering up the helmet visor. I 
heat of summer sun brought out the smell of Sam's hair. The shampoo Sam used had a familiar scent. Had it been a brand I used before? The image of my best friend from high school flooded into my mind. Why was that? That's right. My friend used a similar scent in shampoo. I haven't thought about her in so long. She's the kind of girl who was always so clingy. She liked to link her arms with me whenever we went, so that her so what scent her shampoo was was something I without a doubt recognized. It was an uncom unforgettable sweet and floral scent. A nostalgic feeling of our high school days sprung forth and welled up in my heart. I had seen her less and less since I graduated high school. Last time I saw her was at her wedding banquet last year. I haven't seen her since then. Just how it is when someone... It is sometimes when someone in your life takes a different course from another's. Everyone is busy with their own life. Is she happy? Is she doing well? I wondered. I looked up from Sam's shoulder and towards the shimmering waves in the distance. From the bottom of my heart, I wished her happiness. We're almost there now. You doing okay? Yeah. Sam rode past the town and continued up the mountain road. She did not stop until after, he had, after she had pulled into the entrance of the cemetery site. She parked her bike on the side of the road and gestured for me to hop off. We're here. It's not the place you expect to be on a summer weekend. But today is a special day for me to be here. I see. Let's walk up. It's just at the top of the hill. I had a feeling that they, that's where they were going. <clears throat> I followed after Sam. The stone path leading up the hill was uneven. We walked up the steps carefully. It was quite a climb. I could see a little bit of the ocean as we climbed up the mountainside. Vegetation along the path was dense. There were clearings around the stone path that led to other fam family shrines and tombs. The air was hot and heavy in this place. I couldn't feel much wind. Places like this always have such an atmosphere. My father's grave was also up on a hill. This reminded me. I hadn't gone with my mother to visit my father's grave for Qingming Festival this year. I was on a business trip abroad with my boss for an international conference. Well, shit! I tried to imagine my mother walking up similar stone steps to the festival crowds. My mother is getting older. It must have been difficult hard for her to carry flowers, food offerings, and incense by herself to my father's grave. My mother insisted that I go on the trip and not pass off any other opportunities at work. I wondered if that was truly what she wanted me to do as her daughter. I looked towards Sam. She walked ahead of me on the narrow stone steps. Her back gave an answer of silence. I made a note to myself that I shouldn't accept any invitations for travel next year around the time of the festival. We kept climbing the stone steps, and we eventually reached a clearing at the top of the hill. I saw that Sam's father was there waiting. He waited for us to join him. You're late. I've been waiting for you. I'm late because you forgot to bring the flowers. Scolded your old father. You're just like your mother. Mm. Oh, you're the girl who broke those fiores. Kayan, you're friends with her now. Yes, that's right. Eh, friends with a rough girl like you. Well, now that you're here, I'm going to get the wash get the washing water. What's this then? Michelle, this is my mother's grave. Today would be your birthday anniversary. I see. Sorry, I don't have anything to offer, but my condolences. It's all right. I wanted to bring you here. She'll be happy with your warm thoughts. She passed away to due to illness when I was in primary school. I'm sorry to hear that. You were so young. It must have been difficult for you and your family. Just one of those unfortunate things that happen in life. My father had died in had wait oh my father had died in a car accident when I was in high school. I don't mean to trivialize your situation. I just want to say I understand how painful it is to lose a parent. I'm sorry to hear about your father. It's okay. It happened years ago. Time sure flies for those in the world of the living. It does. No matter what happens, we have to keep going. Yes. Sam set the flowers she had in her hands down to her mother's tombstone. Is that what graves look like up there? She and her father had worked to clean and wash away the dirt and dust that have accumulated on the grave since their last visit. Incense was lit <clears throat> and a woody smell filled the air. I watched them burn offerings and quietly pay their respects to the de departed family member. I lit a jaw stick and prayed a sim small prayer as well. My heart felt heavy. Michelle, you're crying. Are you all right? Oh, I am. Tissue? 
I haven't cried over the death of my father since I was in high school. Memories that I had with him came into my mind for the first time in many years. Perhaps it was a combination of the incense smoke in my eyes and that of Sam's words that have, have touched my heart. I thought of Sam's mother, too. I imagined a scene of her in a hospital bed with a young Sam by her side. How painful it must have been for her as a child to cope with all the that was happening. I looked at the photo on the tomb. Sam's mother is a beautiful woman. Sam is a spinning image of her mother, though I see she got her smile from her father. She and her father are both cheerful and upbeat people. I wonder what Sam's mother was like. I'm sure she was a gentle and kind mother. That's why Sam is the way she is. Whatever life you live, whoever you are, death will be an inevitable fact of life. Sometimes death will come and rob from us someone that we love suddenly and without warning. <laughs> Those in the world of the living just have to carry on. Someday, my mother, Sam, everyone that I know will pass from this world into the next. How lonely is life when it's viewed from this frame of mind? My father, would he be proud of me? My life kept moving forward year after year, yet he remained in my memory. Would I forget him entirely one day? Here, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you for bringing me to this special place of yours. Thanks for coming with. Don't be sad. We have to live life each day with pride and integrity. To be good and decent people. That's what will make our parents and ancestors proud, I think. Where are you going, little girl? Rituals are important, but sometimes they're more to let those left on this side heal and carry on. Yes. Sam said these words with wistfulness. She stared at her mother's photo. She seemed lost in her own thoughts. Sam was smiling softly, but there was a loneliness in her expression. I stood in silence with Sam until the last incident the stick burned out. It was Sam's father who broke the silence. Kayan, I'm heading back f first. We're not having lunch in Saikong together? No, you girls enjoy yourself. I'm going ahead to meet my old friends. <laughs> Beat it, kids. Okay. Nice to meet you again, young lady. Thank you for having me here, Mr. Wong. Okay, bye-bye. You girls be safe. Let's have lunch in Sai Kung then. It'll be good to get some fresh air by the sea before we go. Okay. We walked back down the hill. The air felt lighter again. Yet there was something that still weighed heavily in my heart. It was a dreary and lonely feeling. I wasn't sure what it was. I got back onto Sam's bike and hid my face behind her back. I didn't want her to see my teary-eyed face. Well, you're behind her back, so she wouldn't. Uh, my mother had always said that it was ugly to cry. Jesus, Mom! I took her words to heart, even from a young age. I never liked to cry in front of others. <sighs> Generational trauma. Um, and, this, and, and at this moment, I especially did not want Sam to see me crying like this. But I couldn't help it this time. The tears kept trickling out of my eyes. I haven't cried in so long. I guess my tear ducts felt like it was due time to just let it all out. Sam didn't say anything, though I'm sure she must have felt the patch of wet tears soaking through the clothes on her back. She started up her bike and we rode onwards. I had to collect myself. There is no reason for me to feel sad or upset. I didn't come here with Sam to feel sentimental. I cried so much. I should eat something to restore my salt balance. I'll eat something quickly with her and then have her take me home. That was the plan. Okay, so I've been playing for just over 45 minutes, <clears throat> and I don't want to get too far in quite yet, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to save, and then we will come back at a later time and uh, continue on with the story. Um, but that being said, what's all this then? Hold on. Nothing. Oh, these are the automatic saves and then the quick saves. Got it. Okay. All right. So that being said, thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to chomp down that like button. If you did like it, leave a comment down below with any other game suggestions or video ideas that you'd like to see from me. Share this channel with your friends and subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already to see other videos that I've done. I will see you all in the next one.